to Thursday, the fifth week of Lent and Liturgy of the Word. And um, <clears throat> I'd like to welcome you all and thank you very much for coming uh, to be with us this morning. Here we are on uh, the fifth week of Lent already. Next week is Holy Week and uh, it's just hard to believe how quickly this Lenten season has gone past. So let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take a moment and think about uh, things that maybe we haven't done that we should have done. Maybe things that we said that we wish we could take back. Maybe times that we should have spent in prayer and we were doing something else. So let's just take a minute and think about those things and ask God for his forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Be near, O Lord, to those who plead before you, and look kindly on those who place their hope in your mercy, that, cleansed from the stain of their sins, they may persevere in holy living and be made full heirs of your promise. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street, a bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Until he establishes justice on the earth, the coastlands will wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with its crops, who gives breath to its people and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by your hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, 
to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. The Lord remembers his to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents, the judgments he has uttered. descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. forever his covenant which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham by his oath to Isaac. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died as did the prophets. Yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never see death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? Or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you do not know him. But I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, yet you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. Before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we all know, one thing that's amazing about being a human, something that separates us from the animals, is our ability to think. The interesting thing as we go on and learn our language even, even in a deeper way, 
We understand that there's nuance and that there's usually more than one meaning. Sometimes there's a deeper meaning to things that are said. And many times things are more than they appear, more than face value. And the problem with the Jews in today's reading is Jesus had quite a revelation for them. But they took him literally and they were so um, obstinate to what he was saying, they really weren't listening. They weren't listening to what he had to say. Jesus said, whoever keeps my word will not see death. This kind of set them uh, a little crazy. They were like, he must be possessed. And, and a little bit uh, before this reading, they even called him a Samaritan, which at that time was a huge uh, insult. So they became defensive. They threw insults at him. And as you and I know, that that can be the human go-to. When someone says something we don't agree with, when some, someone says something that um, we can't quite understand, we will throw insults, call them names. And very rarely, um, I think it's the rare person, and it's someone I'm trying to be better at being, is the person who will take something that they disagree with from another human being and say, you know what, let's sit down and talk about this. I'm curious to see what you have to say. Um, maybe I can understand your point and kind of take some time to explain it. But we don't do that. Um, most of the time when someone says something we disagree with, we're already thinking about rebuttals in our mind and you know we're formulating all these things that we're going to say back to them that we don't even hear really what they're saying. And I think in some way that's what happened with the Jews in this gospel today. Jesus had a huge revelation. He said, I am. He is God's son. This put the Jews totally over the edge, and they were ready to stone him. Uh, God made a promise to Abraham, and that promise of the covenant is fulfilled in the Messiah, and Jesus is the Messiah. So, of course, when Jesus says in the gospel that Abraham rejoiced, he did. He knew that God's promise to Abraham was going to be fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Jesus' promising of everlasting life goes even deeper. In this world, no one escapes physical death. So what is he talking about? If we die in Christ, we will have eternal life. We can have it right now. But what's it mean to die in Christ? We have to die to ourselves, things that aren't good for us. Things that separate us from Jesus are the things that we have to die to. We have to get out of our comfort zone sometimes and say, you know what, this is the way I've always done it, but this really isn't the way Christ wants me to do it. We have to think about how our lives reflect the love of Christ in ourselves and in other people. And Jesus said uh, about God to the Jews, he said, you don't know him. And the interesting thing about that is that Jesus came so that we would know the Father. And the, the problem with with I think the way we think about things I know for myself. Sometimes when I think about, do I know God? Do I need God? Uh, you know, I think I'm okay. I think I'm all good. I think I got this. Do I really need that? I, I don't know. We don't always think clearly about what Jesus is offering us in a relationship with the Father. Jesus is calling us to keep his word and never taste death, to live a life of eternity with him beginning today. What an invitation. If we stop to think about what he's saying, it's just mind-blowing. He wants us to live with him forever and eternity. And we can start that journey today. That's an amazing Im invitation. The thing with Jesus is he never wavered from the will of the Father. He always did what the Father willed. And he never count the cost. So many times we'll question well, that would be a good thing to do or whatever, but that's going to be very costly in my life and my relationships or my job or, um, you know, in my hobbies, the way I spend my leisure time, you know, that's going to cost me a lot to follow Christ. Jesus did everything, including the cross, for the Father's will. He loves us that much. So as we take time to think about what Jesus is telling us in the scriptures, and so many times it's a much deeper meaning, than what's on the surface. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, are we going to be like the Jews who are ready to stone him? Are we going to be um, the followers of Christ that we say we are? Take the time and really unfold what he's saying to us to find its deeper meaning. So 
Uh, I do have a question for you today. And that question is, do you believe that you will never taste death if you keep Jesus' word? And I also would like to uh, offer a prayer with you, if you'd be willing to join me. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your incarnate Son. Thank you for keeping your promise to Abraham. Thank you for the ability to see things at a deeper level and to know that there is much more to our lives than just what meets the eye. Jesus came so that we might know you. May his work in this world never be in vain, and in our lives, may we continue to deepen our relationship with you through various things like your word, through spiritual reading, through liturgy, and through prayer. May we lead lives that are accountable and acceptable to the means in which Jesus opened the way into your heart. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, we ask this in Jesus' name. So I wish you all a great week. We have one more week, actually just a few days till we get into Holy Week. And I really pray with all my heart that, that you experience Holy Week at a depth so deep that it, it changes you. And that encounter with Christ that you experience during, especially during the Holy Three Days, really transforms your life because every encounter with Christ can do that. And I wish that for you. And I can't wait to see you as we celebrate the Easter season in a few weeks. So have a great evening or a great day or whatever time it is for you. And uh, we'll see you soon.